Joy Laking, and I'm going to show you how I do a painting. Um, especially at this time when we have COVID and everybody's worried and nobody can go traveling, this is the time to look within to your own creativity and to the beauty that surrounds you every day. A few minutes ago I went for a walk with our dog Fen and I found the most beautiful bright turquoise bug in the marsh. This is a, a really warm day today after a blizzard yesterday. Um, so just I think by painting you'll just start noticing things. Usually when I do a demonstration and I know it's garbage it turns out beautifully just because I'm more relaxed and so I have my paper. I'm working on the 300 pound cold press paper and I have it taped on the tape and I did a little bit of drawing just so I would know where the buildings are. This is Indian Harbor in um, near Peggy's Cove and if you bought the Painted Province book or if somebody gave it to you you'll notice that there's an Indian Harbor painting from years ago in there and I'm just going to get the clip out of my dog's mouth. So I, I want to show you how to do um, wet on wet. This is probably the hardest thing to do in watercolors so you should plan to do like a dozen of them and get used to it. So I have three containers of clean water and I have a nice big brush, the big flat brush, and I'm going to put lots of water on here. More water than you really think you need. Just down to the horizon. And then I look at it on an angle and that shows me if there's any dry areas. And then I take my cloth or my paper towel and I dry the tape. This is really important. And there. But rather than drawing the edge that touches the painting, I dry that edge with my brush. And this is a number 14 round. And you never leave it sitting in water. Oh, see, it's dirty, so yeah. Make sure it's clean before you try to use it as a... Okay, so I'm going to try to... Uh, Take the moisture off here. Didn't do that very well. Okay, now if my paint is all messed up here, I just add some water, clean up my painting area, and wipe it off. And before Christmas, uh, in November, I did a painting outside on a really cold day with mittens on and my winter coat. And I did the whole painting with this number 14 round. So I'm going to get some blues ready. This is the um, Windsor Blue Green Shade. And here's some um, Ultramarine. So you see, you have to really get some paint there. And one of my favorite colors is um, this Windsor Violet or Quinacrinum Violet. So get it ready. And I also like, I think this is my Payne's Gray, yeah. It's a really nice blue-gray, neutrally kind of, kind, kind of gray. Then, wash my brush, dry my brush, and now I'm going to start to paint. So I might have a photo of a sky that is going to um, influence me. So I picked up some paint. I'm going to take the extra moisture off on my cloth. And then I'm going to start in. Now the one thing to remember 
with Payne's Gray is that it dries lighter than it looks. So I'm going to get more paint here. Okay. And then take the moisture off again. And I hardly ever use Naples Yellow, but I'm going to put a little Naples Yellow in here with the nice clean water. Now I can tell that's too light, so now's my chance to get some Windsor Violet and some blue, take the moisture off, and be a little more adventuresome. Now you know that's going to dry lighter, so oops, I got a hair in there. That's a, that's the sort of thing that can really mess it up. Still there. So I'm taking it off the hair off with the brush. Still, uh, that hair is still there. Okay, so I gotta go a little bit fiercer. Mm. 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 Now, I can uh, let this dry and give it another coat. It's still, it's still, uh, it's drying right there. So I'm just going to let that dry, and we'll, I'll show you how to do a second coat on the sky. So now I'm going to jump around, and um, I can't do the water because the water touches the sky. Um, so I'm going to do the shadows on the house. Paint's gray, and Windsor Violet makes great shadows. So I can just start. Uh, Filling that in. And I'll do as much of the painting as I can with, um, with the round brush. And if it's not quite even, see, I'm going to use it to wick the paint off. And then I might go for a little bit browner right here. Oh, another hair. Hmm. Now you have to watch where you get those little dark areas because, you know, they'll dry darker. So now's the time to just clean them off a bit. And I can put a shadow in here, a shadow there, a shadow there. Okay. Mm -hmm. This this building is going to be a red building, but this is the shadow side. Uh, we're we're just got a zillion hairs today. Um. And we want the, the windows, even though the windows trim might be white, we want it to be in shadow. So we're gonna I'm gonna paint that whole wall in shadow. And under there too. And maybe a little more of a blue gray for the shadow on this house just to make it interesting right now I'm waiting for the sky to dry so I can give it another coat so there's always stuff you can do just jump around do something else and this area is going to be in shadow as well And 
so is this one. So, um, the best thing in the world is not to have uh, a preconceived notion that this is going to be perfect, but to just have fun. That's easier said than done. Quite often, I listen to uh, podcasts uh, because I find that they relax me as long as they aren't on really... Uh, negative subjects. Okay. Now we've got the um, the building shaped a bit. And no, that's way too wet to do. So I'm going to jump down to the foreground. This isn't a very good picture, but this is where, this is the painting I'm doing in oil, and you can see how I've started it in oil. So, oh, I've got a spot there, I'm going to dry that off. So, I'm going to pick up, I have uh, four reds. I have um, cadmium red, medium, Windsor red, uh, which is like a fire engine red the alizarin, which will make it dark, and then I have a, a pinky, a real pinky red. But for this grass, I think I want the cadmium red. So I'm going to put some reds in. Now, the cadmium colors tend to be a little bit opaque. They're also really poisonous. So if you dump your brush in your coffee by mistake, then throw it out. Don't drink it. Luckily, there's a lot of uh, colors now that aren't nearly so toxic. But this is kind of an orangey red, and if I find it's not orangey enough, you know, I can pick up some... Uh, Windsor Yellow Deep, and that'll certainly give it more of a feeling of orange. Here we're having a little backwash going on, so this is a good time for to show you if I can find it. I have another brush. Uh, uh, my scrubber brush. It's gone missing, so we can scrub that with uh, what's, just a little water. I did have a red scrub brush here this morning, so a little water, soft, back and forth. Just get always clean. If your cloth isn't clean, dump it. And you only, you never blot up and down, you only blot once. If you have to blot again, you have to wet it again. And then clean cloth. Because what happens if, if you go up and down, you end up putting um, more of the dried paint right back, and then you really can't move it. So the Windsor Violet, and I, my brown is... Uh, Burnt Umber, which is a nice soft brown. Um, I like with, um, I'm going to go back to my big brush. I like Burnt Umber because it's fully erasable. Um, you get it on and it's too dark, you can lift it and make it light again. And if you use color like sepia, it it stains the paper and you can't go backwards, so... I do have steep sepia there and it's a little darker, but... I would recommend just having fewer colors and really getting to know them before you... Um, start adding extra colors that are similar. Yeah. This is 
paints gray and looks very gray and that's because it has a little brown mixed in it so I can go from dark and then I can add water and this will make it a lot lighter and if I want some depth in the red I can use a little alizarin if I really want it to pop I can add a little of the violet because that's it will be really dark with it I'm not sure what the red is um, could be Canada holly looks looks like Canada holly just little berries on the ends of sticks and I can you know even though I'm not going to have a lot of red over there I want a little a little red over there and how are we doing here oh great Feel free to add color, you know, use your, you, use your paper as your palette and, you know, mix some different colors in. Now, um, mostly this is my, it looks really dirty, but this is Windsor Yellow Light and that is really, really in terrible shape. Um, I like Windsor Yellow Light for my greens. Here's a better Windsor Yellow Green over here. So this is Windsor Yellow Light. Just it's just dirty because it's always got blues mixed with it. And then I can add a little sap green with it. Give it some punch. I never used to use a mixed green until I painted with uh, Denise Camo and. Since then, I have been using a little, a little sap green. It's kind of interesting to add a new color. A little bit of paint, a little bit of water gives you a tr uh, transition in color. Okay, so. sky should be ready now for another layer so this is why I have so many different waters because you can see that the two are really dirty but I still have one that's kind of clean and so I need my big fat brush again and this is a chance to see the whole thing again so with the brush lots of water this gives you a second chance to add a stronger color or more color. It's way safer than working it when it's uh, drying is to just leave it and let it dry and then go in again with another wash. So, again, I'm looking at it to see if there's any little dry areas. And there is right here. And then take my cloth and dry the edges every time. This is sounds really fussy, but um, it does work. Uh -huh. Dry the top. And then with my brush, make sure the brush is relatively clean. Dry that edge. Okay, this time I'm going to add some uh, cloud low down. So, a uh, little Payne's Gray, a little blue, and a little of that Windsor Violet. Hmm. Okay. 
And I don't really want that to compete with the, with the upper sky. So I'm taking the moisture out. This will be a lot, I uh, see a lot stronger with the, with the moisture out. Okay, take the moisture out. And with the brush, now I can shape it and move it around a bit. So even though I just wanted to work the bottom, um, I might, it's, if it's still wet, yeah, it's still wet, I'm going to add a little more blue to the top, a little paint gray, and a little blue, a little mauve, and then, you know, clean brush, pick up the paint, take the extra moisture off. This is 300 pound paper and you can see it's buckling a bit, but, um, you know, the tape will hold it probably a little dry flat or there's ways that you can flatten it afterwards. like to add a little pink in there, but I guess I'll just try it. Um, see, you've got a little little spot there, but that's all right. I'll just get it out and add a little pink up there, too. Okay, now um, I'm going to wait for that to dry a little bit so that I can put the water in. Um, so I'm going to uh, use some, this is, this is this yellow that looks terrible here, but uh, it's just Windsor yellow. And I can add a little sap green to it or a little blue. Um, I don't want to put any of the really dark trees in yet because they're, you know, they're over the water. So I'm, I'm kind of, there's a little Payne's Gray. But I'm going to steer clear of the water because, uh, you know, I haven't got the water in there yet. And right on the um, right on the paint, I can add, you know, some um, yellow right into it. And if that's too dark, if you think, oh wow, that's really too dark, um, before you blot, you just wet it with water and. You know, you get one blot that way, which will lighten it. And if it's still um, too dark, if I put the shadow where I shouldn't have, then I can use my little scrubber that I still haven't found and give it a good scrubbing. Okay, scrubber seems to be gone. You 
can see I do most of the painting with this brush. Now this water looks filthy and I could change it but it, it's really just got the dark color in it so it doesn't really matter for the water. So I make a nice blue. I want a gray blue so I'm going to add a little burnt umber in with it. Oops, too much. So. Now this time, this isn't, um, you know, this hasn't had water on it. So now I have to work fairly quickly and I don't want to touch where it's still wet, the sky. And I don't want it to look outlined, so I have to so I picked up some more water there. bit of purple in there. Now we have to have that same color come out the other side of the building because if it doesn't it won't look like it goes behind the building. Now we're going to have, this is wet here, so I'm just going to dry it so I can put the rest of the water there. Okay. Because water is laying in flat in one plane, then everything kind of goes back and forth to if it starts to go up, then it looks like it's going up the hill. Um, now I can give a feeling there of rocks. Uh, so the top of the These are trees. This is the island going in here now. But you can see it's negative space because I'm painting as if there are rocks along the shore. And I, it's still too wet, but I could get probably get away with a little bit of a dark underneath it now. Mm -hmm. smaller brush. Never ever leave your brushes down in the water and always make sure that they're just laying like sideways at night. Okay. 
that's going to be a lighthouse. Now I can put some roofs in. That's a this up. Oh, here's one that's a little bigger. Okay, so this is a uh, number eight. And this isn't a particularly expensive brush. Um, this is um, an Escodo synthetic made in Barcelona. The very best brush in the world is the Windsor Newton Series 7, Kalitsky Sable. And I used to think that that's what I needed, and I do have a, a couple of them. But, um, you know, a brush like this is worth a few hundred dollars that size. So, putting the, the roof in here, a little dangerous unless it's dry, but we'll hope it's dry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and this one can be a little lighter. Hmm. Not moving as fast as um, I did this morning. I tried to. This is the actually the fourth go I've had filming this, and now I've got Jim behind the camera. Uh, so maybe it'll go a whole lot better than it's gone when I've been trying to do it by myself. I also had Danica here. Trying to do it one day. Um, so I'm, I'm just making that that building's going to be red. The secret is to just keep jumping around uh, or working on an area that isn't touching. So this has kind of a nice, this is nice because it's got a little line there. So it means I can paint next to it and just leave it light. So sometimes, uh, because the sky is tricky um, and it's easy to mess up, sometimes it's a good idea to hardly do any drawing and put the sky in and then if it works beautifully you can do your drawing and if it doesn't work you can just turn the paper over. I used to be a real purist and I wouldn't use any white paint, but now I'm happy to use white paint any time I need it. show you this here and actually I could do the put a little more of the background in before I stop and then we're going to see if we can't stop the filming and I'll take it a little further and then we'll kind of finish it up but before that you can see this is not anchored there yet so now's the chance to do that um, I'm going to use my big brush and some blue
This island's gonna break that back line. And if I think that the far shore is too dark, um, <clears throat> I could give it a blot and lighten it. Clean tissue. Now, the trouble with the paper towel is it's got way too much texture, so you really need to have Kleenex and, or cheap toilet paper that isn't fluffy. Or diapers, like old diapers are the best cloth, but they're really hard to come by now. Not used. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um... Do you think if I stop, we'll be able to start again or not? Yes. Or I should finish as much as I can right now. Oh, a little hair. We've had quite a hard time. I've had quite a hard time getting this little, little clip together. So, um... This one's the last one. This is a little lighthouse way. Oh, I've got. Uh, more than I wanted on that side, so immediately wet it, blot it, and leave it, let it dry. Um, okay. okay, well, <clears throat> there's the start. This might be the end. But if we can figure out a way to um, pick it up where we left off here, then we might come back for five minutes after I've worked on this for another hour.